Hello and welcome to another episode of A Brief History. Today's episode, Dan Brown. No, not that one. That one. Ready, set, go. Lincoln, Nebraska, 2007. A young man named Dan Brown gets a message from a friend online saying, Hey, Dan. You ought to teach me how to solve the Rubik's Cube sometime. Being known around his... Being known around, being known around his school As the guy who spent way much time, too much time With a toy from the 1980s Dan decided to go above and beyond His call to action and what resulted was a two-part tutorial on how to solve the Rubik's Cube. Being known around his school as the guy who spent way too much time with a toy from the 1980s, Dan decided to go above and beyond his call to action, and what resulted was a two-part tutorial on how to solve the Rubik's Cube. Within its first day up, the tutorial was featured on Dig, and by the next morning, it had gained approximately 3,500 views. Being in the process of becoming a viral sensation, Dan decided to grab this opportunity and run with it. He began posting videos regularly about random topics. He taught his videos... He taught his videos... He taught his videos everything. He taught his viewers how to do multiple things, Things, such as card tricks, how to solve other puzzles, and how to do this. <laughs> In 2008, Dan's Rubik's Cube tutorial was nominated for a YouTube award. Dan called out to his viewers to vote. Yeah, I've got scruff. I think it, I think it makes me look rugged. And in the end, a teenage nerd from Nebraska beat out the likes of Soldier Boy for best instructional video. And I mean, back then, Soldier Boy was a pretty big freaking deal. He had his own dance craze that someone did at a talent show when I was in like seventh grade. Yeah. He was that big a deal. He had his own dance craze that he did at school all the time. Moving on. Also in 2008, in order to bring some consistency to his videos, Dan started a new channel and a new series called Dan Brown's Universe. This series, in its original form, spanned two seasons and featured segments such as Interesting Viewer, Dan's Wall, and Adventure Time. No, not that one. Yeah, that one. During this time, Dan Brown's universe became Dan's main focus and his main channel, Pogo Bat, became somewhat secondary. In 2009, Dan attended the 789 YouTube gathering in New York. Ah! It was there that he met fellow YouTubers Canaloo. Ca 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 it's a Canaloo of Mika Kitties. It's a live, 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 Canaloo, and Mika Kitty! It was there that he met fellow YouTubers Nanaloo, Mika Kitty, Catrific, and Mitchell Davis of Live Lava Live. Later that year, this team of young tubers formed the channel Vlog Vetica, which, for those of you who don't know, was a massive collab channel that the five of them used to keep in touch. <laughs> Near the end of 2009, Dan shifted his focus back to Pogobat and began what, to me, was the classic Dan Brown formula. On Mondays, Dan would discuss a debatable topic and ask his audience to leave video responses stating their opinions on the topic. Justin effing <laughs> On Tuesdays, Dan answered Twitter questions. On Wednesday... Ah, I was so good, and then I messed up! On Tuesdays, Dan answered Twitter questions. On Wednesdays, he put viewer mail on his wall. On Thursdays, he would let his viewers vote on what to talk about via the YouTube moderator module. And on Fridays, he would feature three of his favorite video responses to his Monday video. Big three. Fade out. This Monday through Friday schedule characterized Dan's videos for a long time until one day, some serious wibbly wobbly timey wimey stuff started going down. Due to an accident involving quantum mechanics and a deep fried meaty stick of goodness, Dan's universe was stuck in a constant state of Thursday. So every single day, Dan did what he would do on any other Thursday and he let his viewers decide what he should talk about. Little did we know that Clever Dan was up to something much bigger because in 2010, Dan Brown attended the first ever VidCon to announce his super duper top secret project called Dan 3.0. Produced by the online broadcasting company Revision 3, Dan 3.0 was an ambitious social experiment in which Dan would allow his viewers to vote on what he should do in his life every day for an entire year. As Dan put it, For one year, I am very literally putting complete control of my life in your hands. The project started out with the best of intentions and some very awesome things were achieved, such as a 10 city coast to coast road trip with gatherings in every stop, and of course, Dan's beard. Oh my god, Dan's wow. beard. Did you oh, see that? That is so amazing. Awesome. That, that is Dan's so beard. Awesome. Look at that. It's Dan's, Dan's beard. beard. But unfortunately, about halfway through the project, audience response began to turn slightly negative and views began to dwindle. It was around this time that Dan began to feel exhausted and unsatisfied with what he was doing on his channel. Dan's existential crisis led to the project being ended about four months before its intended end date. A few months later, in July, Dan started a new vlog show, somewhat confusingly titled Delicious Steak. Dan kept with this show until May of 2012 when he left Revision 3. Dan's departure from a show format meant that vlogging could once again become his hobby as it was back in 2007. One of the main reasons that Dan could once again have fun with it was that he no longer had to rely solely on his personal YouTube channel to sustain his income. This was because he had taken up a position as an on and offline host for the music network Fuse, and for those who are interested, Dan's show is called Trending 10, link in the D-Box. Since regaining his sense of creative freedom, Dan's Pogobat videos have focused heavily on heated political and sociological issues such as the 2012 presidential election, gun control, and more recently, the North Korean nuclear scare. In 2013, 
What the heck? In 2013, Dan appeared alongside Wheezy Waiter, Mitchell Davis, C Nanners, whose name I now know, and a bunch of other YouTubers who I'm not going to list again, to be a part of the documentary Please Subscribe, which was made by Dan Doby, who subscribes to me now. Sup, Doby? Dan Brown's story is not necessarily the most lighthearted and fun of YouTube histories, but it is still quite inspiring. Dan started YouTube as a teenager, and throughout his career, his viewers have watched him grow up. Any crisis that he has faced, his viewers have faced with him, but of course, they were also there for the good things, like when he went to China or when he was a contestant on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Dan was thrust into the YouTube limelight at 17, which is as old as I am right now, and as with most people who have large amounts of success thrown at them without warning, Dan struggled to find himself, a problem that everyone faces at one point or another. But from the looks of it, Dan seems to be perfectly comfortable and satisfied with his current career situation. Also, I mean, the dude made an extreme sport out of pogo sticking. That's freaking awesome. I'll see you in a week, DFTBA. You have just watched a brief history of my favorite person in the entire world. That would be me. <laughs> if you enjoyed it, you should subscribe to Foot of a Ferret. If you enjoyed it, you should also click the like button. If you enjoyed it, you should also subscribe to YouTube.com slash PogoBat. That's my channel. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching. Goodbye. Okay, let's dance. Now, this is a jam for all the fellas trying to do what those ladies tell us. Get shot down because you're overzealous. Play hard to get females, get jealous. I wanna rock right now. I'm the reason y'all came to get down. I'm not internationally known, but I'm known to rock the microphone. So let's.